hello everyone welcome again in this video i'm going to show you <coughs> demonstration of a uh, school management project in java so we'll talk about the tools and technology and the coding pattern we are using what these files are doing over here <coughs> different packages we are using features and functionality a lot in this video so we'll talk uh, this thing in a detail but before that i'm going to discuss the technology that's application uh, at the very first we are using java as a core technology and for the server side it's using servlet and for the front end side to render the data it's using jsp along with jsp it has html uh, css yeah and bootstrap bootstrap and js libraries yeah and uh, to manage the backend it's using mysql and uh, mysql workbench is there so there's a tool it's using mysql workbench and uh, it's running on Eclipse and as a server deployed over the Tomcat. I think the version is 8.5 and the MySQL version is 8. Okay, so Java is latest you can use. It's running on 1.8. So <clears throat> let's run the application and see the features and functionality, how the application is worked. Then we'll move to the code side and we'll explain, we understand the code structure over there. So in order to run the application, just you need to right click on the project, go to run as, run on the server, select the server as a Tomcat 8.5, click on next, click finish. These are the steps you need to follow in case you are having this project, you are buying this project from code one. So we have a technical team, the remote team will be there. We will connect with you via Zoom meetings and uh, Zoom meetings or any desk will take access and will do the complete setup at your machine. And the setup will display like this. Now, uh, so you have to use these tools to run the application. So you can follow these steps. So again, I'm going to for the steps, right click on it, go to run as, run on server, select the server and click next, click finish. All other setup that this deployment and uh, deployment and server setup will do if you need a help. Okay. So this is the home page and over the home page we have a welcome page and here we have a sign in option and the sign up option. So when you click on the sign up, uh, there are different types of data like, like different types of users are there. So we have a faculty accountant and a student and yes, it has an admin also. So if I go to my database and you can see this is a database, I'm going to commenting this. So this is the database. It has a many tables like user, subject, students, role, marks, it generate marks, fees, faculty and all that according to the requirement or the features and functionality to the application. So if you want to view the data of any table, just right click on the table. Let's say for now I'm going to view the data of user table. So right click on that, select the first option. You will be see, you will see the data of user. So if you see here, we have a role ID as a one, two, three, four. It means we have a four types of rule. Uh, one is an admin, faculty, accountant and a student. I will log in one by one with each user and show you the features and functionality that particular user can access. Okay, so let's go again to the page. Also, if you want to register a new user, uh, you can go here into the sign up section. Just fill out these details. So I'm using dummy data over here. And I think this field will be a contact number, mobile number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's using proper validation. So make sure while you entering the data, the data should be in a proper format. To select the date, you can uh, like uh, you can use this calendar. Uh, let me select uh, any date. So that's fine. Role. <coughs> let's say for this, I'm going to select as a student and choose a file. It means it will be a profile uh, profile pic. So for now, I'm going to uh, creating a, like I'm uploading a dummy image. Uh, you can use the real time images. So let me check where we have images. So let's say from this side, I'm going to pick this image okay? and click on the sign up. So when I did this, it said <coughs> user successfully registered. Now I can go to the sign in section. Similarly, you can uh, like, uh, you can uh, register different user as well faculty and accountant and when you go to the database refresh the user table like this you will be able to see the data here right we have this new record as a uh, all old id for maintenance it's a student okay now uh, let's go to the sign in and log in as an admin and check what admin can do over there so i just copy the username for the for the admin and the password 
I hit the sign in button so I can see the first option we have a user list so I can check the all the user that we have uh, added into the database you will see this user student as a student we recently added if you want to delete any record uh, how can you do that so any user so just check this uh, check box and click on this delete button this record will be deleted apart from that we have a search option here let's say I want to search a user by a first name so this will be my first name admin so I just go here and hit the search button you can see the record is filtered I can click on the reset option if I want to search any user by login ID I can do that as well so here we have an option for a login ID click on the search it will filter the data now <clears throat> this is all about the user management module so how admin can manage this users different types of users and yeah another module we have a class module so into the class class module we can add a new class so let's say if i go use class list you will see these classes are available into my database right so these classes are showing again into the class list what i can do i can search the class by its name so let's say i want to search class by its name let's say it's the class so these are the classes currently available when i say hit the search button it will tell the data if i want to delete any class the same way uh, i can select the class from here click on delete now let's add a new class so i go to a class section click on to add class let's say i'm going to give it a name as a third class and here this is a class 3 I click on save the data is saved successfully now if you go to the list you can see and just remember we are logged in as an admin user and we are performing some operations so now we have added the classes class this class is showing here and also I can edit it let's say I want to edit it so let's say I want to keep it a description so click on save now the data is updated if I go again and check the data is updated now so this is all about the class module next module we have from admin side is the student module so admin have a rights to add the student in any class let's say now we have a class and I want to add uh, enter uh, any student in that class so how can I do that uh, for that I have to click student section add student and here I can select the student name so this is the new student Tyler that we just added and the class name we have just added third class automatically the data is coming from the database and fetching the recent data as well and we have to mention some details let's say father's name blood group and the address of the student click on save so data is saved successfully if you go to the registration uh, it means uh, if you go to the student list that is uh, assigned to particular class so it will display over here Similarly, you can perform the delete operation as we did before and you can search any student batch name and you can say this is the record that we have just added. <clears throat> so apart from the student site, we have a next module as a faculty. So into the faculty, I can select a, a faculty name. So let's say this is the faculty and I want to add some information about the faculty, let's say qualification. So I am I'm going to say masters. <clears throat> address I click on the save so it data is saved successfully you can add the detail about the faculties here okay you can manage the faculties details and similarly we have accountant section where I can add the information about the accountants so I'm an admin user and I can perform crude operation with each and every module and uh, <clears throat> yeah here for the accountant list we don't have an edit option but we can delete record we can add the records add a new uh, accountant details apart from that as an admin i can add a new subject into database so uh, for that i have to go to the uh, subject module go to add subject select the subject let's say into first first i have to select the class so let's say uh, we have recently added class third so in the third class i want to add a subject so let's say i want to add a subject as a science and this is this is testing <coughs> click on save the subject is added and now if you go to the subject list you will see the data here again you can perform delete operation and the search operation attendance list <clears throat> as an admin i can't add the attendance but i can view the attendance here uh, with a status present or absent i can also search any attendance via the username or the student name i can check the details of the fees and the marks it 
mark and uh, and the mark three at least okay let's log out apart from that we have a my profile option for the admin user and we have a like change password and log out so this is all about the admin side now let's log in as a faculty and see what faculty can do so we have a common login page so you can use it and okay <clears throat> now i just log in as in faculty and i can see what faculty can do so faculty have a limited access so faculty can do some add attendance uh, class list add marks it so um, like like to faculty can uh, manage the attendance classes and marks it so to add any attendance for any student just faculty need to click on the add attendance select the student name let's say taylor and present or absence let's say present and save I can view the attendance list over here and you can see the detail will be displayed here and the student code is also generated so 10202 the code for this student. I can update, I, I, I can delete the uh, attendance if I want and I can search attendance. Class lists are there so uh, like, like faculty can view the classes, available classes. Faculty can add a mark sheet for any student so let's say for Taylor I want to add a mark sheet. And I click on the aid so it has a one subject as a science uh, for this this user is assigned to that one subject like this user this student is assigned to the third class and third class have this subject so that's why it's looking like this it's it, it's it's showing the subject name so the subject name spelling is not correct so but it's fine and let's say I'm going to add the marks and at click on the save now uh, you can say the student gate marks it is generated Go to the mark set list you will see the result here pass or fail uh, accordingly to the mark set list section same uh, feature we have a my profile and change password and log out for faculty as well now let's log in as an accountant user so what accountant will do accountant will manage the fees structure the fees uh, the related things the payment related thing so we can add a fee uh, let's say for a tailor we want to add a fee of uh, 5600 and click on the save and now it will display view list and uh, uh, the detail will be displayed over here it can search the fee as well and uh, now the important part of the important user of the application is a student so let's log in as a student and see what a student can do so I just log in enter the username and password for the student hit the sign in button I can see a student can view the attendance fees list and the mark sheet. Okay, so specifically, this student can't see the mark sheet of all the students because the mark sheet is not visible for everyone. For a uh, faculty and admin, they can view the mark sheet of all the students, but the student specific, if let's say the student XYZ is logging into the portal and they can see the mark sheet they own. And the fee list also they can see only their fees currently the by default status is paid because we didn't integrate any payment option so there is no option to pay and all so and this is the academic project so it's not a real-time project right so we have a limited feature in future if you want we can extend it and we can implement that uh, feature as well okay it might become into the feature announcement uh, okay so you understand the the flow of the application how the features and functionalities are working uh, we have a database over there and let's now check the uh, file structure so in this i will again go to the notepad and i will add some more tools and build tools so it's a maven project it's using maven application like like it's it's it's, it's using pom.xml uh, as a build tool or manage the dependency it's following the mbc architecture so uh, the things are managed, the resources, the files are, internal files are managed into the MVC. And it's using all the Java concept, the basic concept and the standards that we use in industry, okay, for a real time project. So it's, it's, it's following similar pattern. So for that, let's understand uh, what we have here. If you know the MVC, now uh, you should be aware with a uh, model view controller. So we have a controller part here and we have a model part here and we have a view part here. 
into web app folder so all the jsps files are available over there let's understand these file structure one by one so into the bean we have a uh, like for each and every module we have a beans so beans will contain the data setters so it means it's uh, uh, like it will help us to transfer the data from one layer to another layer again into the controller side we have a uh, servlets that's going to handle the request and response from the front end and uh, the request is coming from the front end and will check the uh, request perform the operation according to the request and send back to the view so this uh, the servlet for each and every module we have a different controllers and controllers mean servlet like as a technology it's using servlet internally so we have a for user module to manage the user we have a different controllers and we have a mars controller for each and every module we have a different controllers to manage the exceptions we have exception package model is there to perform the database operations so model will be responsible to handle the database related query and the responsible like like uh, to communicate with the database again we have a utility so utility just you for now just understand what is data utility it's a uh, very it's, it's converting the data one form to another form and where the data validator we are validating the data that is coming from the front end so we it has a like uh, double layer protection so it's using all the validation messages showing the validation message that we are getting uh, over the page let's say the you the phone number should be a proper ten digit number or let's say there is a username the the name should be uh, the username should be in a character only or in a string only it should not contain some numerical value something like that so for html utility we have uh, when we return the uh, html code from the when we return the html code from the server side like like uh, from the server side we use this for jdbc data source is there uh, to manage the database related operations property reader is there the property reader will uh, help you to read the data from the property so where is the property exactly located so if i go to the resources section go to the system dot property you will see here uh, we have a property file so to read this data we are using property readers servlet utilities there to perform the servlet options and yeah again we have a view part so jsp under the jsp folder we have a jsps and under the images folder we have images uh, css bootstrap javascript libraries from the bootstrap side and index dot and form dot xml to manage the resources so if I talk about the server, it's using Tomcat 8.5. So if you need this project, uh, and you can connect us over the Skype, WhatsApp, or mail, and yeah, we will help you to set up the project in case you need an internal explanation how the files are moving, how the data is moving to one layer to another layer. We have that services as well. So just give an inquiry, uh, you will be happy to take a service from Code. Thank you.